G'day, Paul here in Tenderfield, New South Wales, sitting under this beautiful autumn colour. Uh, another glorious day, it's Sunday today, so we're going up to the chapel to worship with the local Presbyterian church this morning. But before we do, we'll read uh, from 2 Corinthians, reading from 2 Corinthians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all his holy people throughout Achaia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He's writing to us in this modern day, wherever you are. This is a letter from Paul uh, <clears throat> to us. Praise to the God of all comfort. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. We're blessed to be a blessing to others. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experience in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. As you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favour granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you with integrity and godly sincerity. We have done so relying not on worldly wisdom but on God's grace. For we do not write you anything you cannot read or understand and I hope that as you have understood us in part you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us just as we will boast of you in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because I was confident of this, I wanted to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and then to have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I fickle when I intended to do this, or do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say both yes, yes, and no, no? But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but it, in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. I call God as my witness and I stake my life on it that it was in order to spare you that I did not return to Corinth. Not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy because it is by faith you stand firm. 
Well, we can say yes and amen to all of that, you know. He set his seal of ownership on us and we're so glad of that. He's put his spirit within us and we're very glad of that. So we say yes and amen. And uh, if you want to read more of the scriptures with us, press on the button that comes at the end of this video. And in the meantime, stay in the word and may the word stay in you. You have a great day.